Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is Probing Paul, episode number eight. That's about eight. Uh, I'm actually in the Philippines right now. I'm in Pandan, which is out in the provinces, so you might hear some roosters in the background and maybe a tricycle or two rolling by. But I also realized that I did not do a Probing Paul last month. I completely blanked as I was working on my, there's a rooster, as I was working on um, my How to Build a Computer series. So check that out if you haven't already, and I'm gonna get right into the questions. These are all taking, taken from the uh, comment section of the last episode of Probing Paul. So, uh, the first one is from Matt Matrix, and he asks, Just curious, is Zen going to be DDR3 compatible? Or is it exclusively DDR4? Uh, he's heard both sides, or he can't find a, a solid answer. Uh, AMD so far has announced DDR4 compatibility, so I don't see DDR3 being a thing there as well. And it's definitely something that AMD would need to support, since uh, the memory controller is actually in there as part of the processor. Uh, when Intel introduced Sandy Bridge, er, not Sandy Bridge, when Intel introduced Skylake, they did include a DDR3L uh, controller, as, or the controller was capable of DDR4 or DDR3L. Nothing about that from AMD so far, so I'm expecting just DDR4 support, which honestly I think is the right way to go, because it's the newest and latest standard. Next question is from Kenny Freeman. Uh, would an all-in-one PC ever find its way into your house? And if so, what would you use it for? Uh, Kenny, that's a good question, and my initial response would be no, because it's just not really my thing, the all-in-ones, but there are some out there that are, have been pretty intriguing. Uh, Origin, for example, has an Omni. Uh, they have different variations of it available, uh, but it has like a 34-inch uh, or 35-inch 3440 by 1440 uh, widescreen monitor, and um, that's kind of my thing with the, with the all-in-ones, is you're stuck with whatever monitor you get. That and the lack of upgrade options. Origin has managed to make one that has a really good monitor built in, first of all, and also has a lot of upgrade options for it. I mean, you can get up to like a 5960X or a 6950X in there. So, I might consider something like that. Uh, what, I, what would I use it for? I mean, just a gaming PC, probably. Something like that. But that is the downside of the all-in-ones, is you're stuck with whatever monitor they give you. So, you know, if you've got a 1080 all-in-one right now, you'd probably be feeling pretty left out as people to 4K fairly soon. The Dirty Diddler asks, that's a great uh, screen name, how long do you think a Core i7-6700K will last? Uh, will it still be viable for gaming, video rendering, or streaming, or and streaming for a few years, or should you upgrade to something like a 6800K? Um, I think the 6700K will last a good two to four years, depending on what you're planning on doing with it. For gaming, streaming, basic video rendering, you're probably just fine, but if you're moving again towards that 4K or higher resolution uh, when it comes to both video rendering or game streaming, you'll probably start to feel like maybe you need a few more cores in there, so that's probably where it's going to start to feel a little bit slower. But honestly, 6700K is an awesome processor right now, especially if you overclock it, you have 8 threads to work with still, so I wouldn't be too concerned. It will probably last you quite a while, but if you're really worried, Maybe start looking at the uh, enthusiast level stuff from uh, Intel the X99 platform and uh, maybe a 6 core or an 8 core processor. Vedant Sharma asks, uh, well first he said I really love your videos and that's always awesome, thank you very much for saying that. Uh, his question is, MITX, mini ITX builds, are they on par with ATX builds? He loves the way small form factor PCs look. He complimented my wife's PC uh, hotbox that I built just recently, She that made her smile. Um, Yep, she's smiling. And uh, he's really interested in building a powerful machine and like a Define Nano S. Uh, there are some downsides to many ITX PCs. He won't be doing SLI, um, but is it a good move? Um, Alright, so definitely with mini ITX you get the, the small footprint, you get the portability factor, um, and yeah, they can be quite cute. The trade-off there is that you're not going to get as much expandability, you don't have any, any extra expansion slots to work with. Uh, and you're also probably going to be dealing with a little bit more uh, restrictions when it comes to airflow and keeping things cool. That said, a chassis like the Define Nano S does have a pretty standard layout as far as the amount of fans that you can include in it and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it is a tighter uh, amount of space to work in. You might find the build process, its process itself to be a little bit more challenging. Um, and beyond that, I want to say a big thank you to Nicholas Luge who posted a reply to your question, since your question was posted a good two months ago, uh, and did a very nice layout of, a, of several of the things I've already mentioned. So, um, I love mini ITX builds, just make sure you get a case that actually has decent airflow in there, 
because otherwise you might be really restricted and you might have to consider lower power hardware in order to make sure that you're not overheating. Uh, but there are cases that can do it, and the Define Nano S is definitely one of them. Next question from Advection357. Paul, are you a clean freak? Like one of those people that has their underwear arranged neatly for each day, cleans dust with a magnifying glass and freaks out and when even the smallest item in the house gets slightly misplaced. My wife is scowling at me now, because she knows that I am not. I aspire to be a clean freak, although I do have my t-shirts folded very nicely via the KonMari method, which is also from my wife. Uh, so I, I like to be clean and I like to be organized. I think it helps me stay more efficient, especially as I'm trying to get work done and that kind of thing. Um, but I cannot claim to be a clean freak. But um, I do like things to be clean. I'm just not like super diligent about cleaning things all the time. Next question from Bariso101. What are your opinions on BCLK overclocking for Skylake CPUs? I can get a 6700 non-K for about $270 and plan on overclocking it using the BCLK method. I need a little bit more horsepower than what a 6600K can give me and the 6700K is out of my budget. In your situation, it does make sense. Uh, I have sort of stayed away from doing further uh, uh, tutorials on how to do the BCLK overclocking method since I did the first one because Intel cut it off, newer BIOSes it doesn't work with. So your main problems are going to be that you're going to be working with an outdated BIOS, one that came out around December of 2015 or January of 2016. You're not going to get any BIOS updates, so you're not going to get support for like KB Lake or that kind of thing, which I guess you don't really need if you're planning on just doing BCLK, BCLK overclocking as an older processor. but you also don't get access to some of the other kind of cool features, like you don't get Turbo Boost. That was actually my biggest disappointment with, uh, with the BCLK overclocking, is you just don't get it. Um, so for some people, yes, it makes sense, especially if uh, it's a, really a budget problem and you really do want to try overclocking. Just keep those issues in mind, because they are downsides to BCLK overclocking. Alright, next question from Anish Patel. Can you get Kyle to change the name of his channel back? No. No, I cannot. And finally, one more question from Mason Zaccardi. Uh, is it worth it to wait until, say, Black Friday or Cyber Monday to buy parts? Would I make compromises for a deal I wouldn't like in the end, uh, so just buy parts I want now, or would it uh, be worth it to wait because there's some deals and some good stuff? I'd say right now, since it's uh, beginning of November, well, wait, but right now is about when the deals start happening. So Black Friday is definitely a great time to shop for computer parts. Uh, it's a, definitely a time where you can get deals that you can't get other times in the year. And one thing I would say to keep an eye out for is the overarching like 10% or 20% off deals that you can get from like a, a specific store that applies to everything. And that way you can get like a good deal on like a processor or something that you wouldn't find discounted otherwise. That is a great way to do it. And uh, I guess the ultimate answer to your question would be yes. Uh, hold out at least until right around the Black Friday time right around the Cyber Monday time, and then keep your eye out for those really good deals. Just bear in mind, the best of the deals that you can find are the ones that are going to be gone really quick. Um, so don't, like, hold out forever. Like, if you see something and it's within a reasonable price or maybe a little bit of a discount beside, uh, compared to what you have seen in the past, then jump on it because you never know. They might not let that deal last. Anyway, guys, uh, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to sign off from here in the Philippine Islands. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and hit the thumbs up button and all that good stuff. And leave me comments in the comments section and let me know uh, if you have questions for next month's Probing Paul, because I, I won't forget next month, I promise. See you next time, guys.